welcome to this episode of Photo Theology. I'm your host, Doug. And today we're going to be looking at the Nikon D5200 versus the Pentax K30. Now, the D5200 has just been newly released. It's been around for about, I want to say, a month-ish or so. So it's it's fairly new camera. And what we're going to be looking at today is we are going to be looking at the 24 megapixel system versus the interpolation 16 megapixel system and where that leaves us. Now, the reason why I went with the Pentex the K30 is because right now the Nikon D5200 is valued at roughly about 900 bucks. Okay? It's valued at about 900 bucks. And the Pentex K30 is now down to like 620, okay? The body by itself. And that 900 bucks is basically the Nikon, the body by itself, okay? So that's, that's roughly where the two set. Now, um, truth be told, you can get the K5 II for around 950-ish to 1,000. So you can get the Pentex K5 II for about, you know, 950-ish to 1,000. I could have went that route, I just haven't gone that route yet. I thought I would go the low in route today to see what the results are. And I was actually kind of surprised. I was. Um, now, the first thing is this, is that the Nikon 5200, or the D5200, is using a completely different architecture than the 5100 was. And it's definitely using a different architecture than the D7000. So this is actually pretty interesting because what you actually have in this camera in terms of its uh, noise control is you have the noise control system that is basically equivalent to the Nikon D800E. You're going to see that as you go through this video and you look at the noise. Now, with that part being said, I will say this. I do think that the Nikon is better on its noise control than the Pentex of the K30. I will be the first one to say that. I'm not going to deny that in any way, shape, or form. On the flip side of this, though, you also have to look at the fact that it's a 24 megapixel unit. And the question then becomes, what do you give up and what do you gain? So noise control goes to the Nikon, okay, versus the Pentex. I'd say its noise control is roughly about two to four times better. All right. However, there are two major disadvantages that the Nikon actually has walking into this, and these were apparent the moment I started um, viewing and uh, you know, viewing the results of the images. Okay, after I had processed them in RAW, the or processed them from the RAW format. The first thing is this: is its colors are completely off, just like the Nikon D eight hundred E, the D fifty two hundred still has that same issue when it comes to reds looking like they might as well be burgundy. Uh, you have these under-saturated yellows and, you know, the greens and the blues and whatnot. I mean, you just look at the color palette and you know there's something wrong with the camera. The other issue that you have in comparison is the fact that the unit's exposures are just completely off, okay? Multi-exposuring is not this thing's uh, strongest point. This reminds me a lot of the Nikon, the D7000, uh, when it came out. And uh, I remember when the Nikon D7000 came out, because the first thing I noticed was your highlights are overblown. And I'm, and I'm not even talking, you know, um, highlights in terms of just like hot spots in an image, okay? I mean, because that's actually the overblown part. But I'm talking about um, highlights in terms of color tones and stuff like that. Okay, so there are certain color tones that the D7000 in a well-exposed uh, environment will struggle with when you talk about multi-exposure, when you factor in shadows and other things that it has to go up against. Uh, so such as lighter pinks, whites, so on and so forth. You really have that issue there with the D7000. I definitely see that with the Nikon, the, um, the D5200 as well. There's, there's no difference in that when you're talking about the actual image. Uh, the D5200 uh, definitely has 
those same kind of exposure issues that the you know, D7000 had. Now, is this a result of how Nikon builds their units? Obviously, yes. Is it a result of the concept of having superior noise control? Possibly. But it doesn't change the fact that the camera does it. Uh, the dynamic range on the camera is in, just is incredibly poor, especially for its price point, and especially for the fact that this is basically a second generation camera based off of the Sony's 24 megapixel you know um, sensor that Nikon used in their D3200. So. This is one of the things that you have to keep in mind here when you're talking about the camera, is the fact that Nikon is taken, they, they have taken another bite of the apple here off of this, you know, 24 megapixel sensor that Sony's given them, you know, in the form of the D3200, and these are the results that you get. Uh, I mean, all you have to do when you look at the, look at, uh, you know, the comparison here is look at your whites. You look at your whites, look at your shadows. And you'll see how the camera basically just tries to, you know, push in the opposite direction, almost in a contrasty kind of form, to the nth degree, emboldening both sides. But the problem is this, is that you have overexposure occurring in that. There are certain areas of the picture where you have overexposure, and it clearly makes no sense. And in comparison to the Pentax, the K30 specifically, um, you know, you go and look at its, you know, counter results to the Nikon, and you definitely see, you know, a night and day difference there. Now, this is one of these situations where a person has to decide, do you want to have sharpness? Do you want to have color? I mean, if you want proper color schemes, and if you want to have the proper sharpness, then hands down, you've got to go with the Pentex K30 on this. If you want the more robust resolution, it still goes to the Pentex K30. That's enough said right there. But if you are looking at the better noise control, then that's where I say the Nikon D5200 actually wins us out. Now, there is a second part to this, which deals with the uh, mechanics. And uh, this is pretty important here. And the reason for this is that the mechanics of the unit and I'm talking the you know D5200 versus the Pentex the you know K30 the mechanical aspects of the unit are very very different um, if you want to make a comparison between the two uh, mainly it's gonna break down like this okay uh, frames per second both units might as well be the same okay We'll say they might as well be the same. Uh, the Nikon is, I believe, I want to say around about five-ish. The Pentex is uh, six. Okay, so you're, you know, they, they might as well be the same. Um, Autofocusing speed, though, you are going to have a difference there. Uh, Nikon for their D5000 series has typically been around about a point, we'll say a uh, point three-ish. Okay where the Pentex um, is a 0.16-ish. Okay, so you do have a difference there. Now understand that that's with the idea that you are using a high quality lens. Okay, that's what this is, all right? So if you wanna go throw a $1,000 lens onto a $900 camera or a $1,000 lens onto a you know, $600 camera, then you'll be getting those autofocusing speeds. All right, no matter how you want to look at it from an autofocusing standpoint, the Pentex is basically going to have twice the autofocusing performance in comparison to the Nikon. And that definitely is going to play out even when you're talking about low-lit situations. Okay, so where this becomes relevant when you talk about mechanics is if I'm in a low-lit situation, okay, and the camera is using a certain lens that's not favorable to lighting, okay, then what's going to happen is that autofocusing that is maximized to a point, we'll say three-ish on the Nikon in terms of a second, 
is going to multiply itself into, you know, three or four or five going on in terms of seconds. That's how that plays out. So one of the key things to look at with a camera is its level of intelligence in terms of how fast can it autofocus, how fast can it lock on, how fast can it do these things while properly reading your highlights and your lowlights in terms of dynamic range. Typically cameras that have a superior dynamic range are superior when it comes to autofocusing as well. And the reason for this is because they're able to read the lighting in a better format than cameras that are not. So the Nikon, because it has this, we're going to call it a contrasty um, exposure system, there are going to be certain situations and low-lit situations where the Nikon's actually going to see it darker than for what it really is, and the camera's going to struggle more based on that analogy alone. And that's, that's factual. Um, a great example would be this. You take the Pentex K52, take the Nikon D7000. Nikon D7000, I kid you not, will sit there and be there all day trying to autofocus on something, okay, with its uh, 18 to, you know, 105 kit lens on the telephoto end, okay, on, on, the, uh, on the 105 end. Where the Pentex, if you want to use the kit lens, you can go ahead to 18 to the, uh, the 18 to 55, but that thing will literally, you know, cut through autofocusing in a low lit situation like a hot knife through butter. What makes it even worse though, is you can lower the lighting performance that much more and it still beats out the Nikon. So the Pentex can be in a low lit situation that is like, for the sake of the conversation, let's just say four to eight times unfavorable to it in comparison to what the Nikon is in, all right? and yet the unit will still outperform the Nikon when it comes to autofocusing. This translates over to your 5200 here versus your K30. It's the same deal. When a camera mechanically simply just can't support, you know, its autofocusing aspects and stuff like that, that really does hinder the overall performance of the unit when you talk about how well it can perform when it comes to, you know, taking pictures in diverse lighting situations. Now, um, if we're talking about, uh, you know, other aspects of the camera, okay, because obviously you're going through here and seeing the noise control and stuff like that, once again, you definitely see where the Nikon has picked up, you know, a lot of steam, and um, at this point it, it has in the video. And uh, the Pentex, you know, I mean, it's good. Uh, especially compared to the Canon T4i, it's good. It's just that it's not as good as the Nikon. When you're talking about other aspects of these cameras, uh, keep in mind that if you're talking from a video standpoint, uh, what's going to happen is the Nikon is going to have a more robust video system. So that is true. Where the Pentex is going to counter that is that it uses an all-weather resistant body. Now that, that's important. Okay, um, because an all weather resistant body means that the camera's actually just mechanically made better. Okay, but to the flip side of that, if we're talking features, and if we're talking video, the Nikon has a more robust system. However, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. If the unit can't take a picture right, it isn't going to record video right. That's how it works. The video system that you have in a digital camera is reflectant of its picture taking capability. So when you look at these images here and you see how the Pentex's image, even at the higher ISOs, comes out at you more. And you see that it's still more even on the exposure side than the Nikon, okay? And you see that the color balance is correct and all those kind of things. Your video is gonna reflect that too. Don't make the mistake that it won't. Now really what it's going to come down to is, I want to say, if you want to have a line in, all right, or a mic in, I guess you could say, then yeah, you got to look at the Nikon, it's got that. The Pentex unfortunately doesn't have that. But that is the price that you pay to have the K30 at the price point that it's at. Keep in mind, between these two cameras, you are talking about a price difference of roughly, you know, um, 
200-ish. You know, you are. So, in understanding that, okay, there is a give and a take here. The reason why I went with the K30 was because it was an economy line unit, which the Nikon D5200, with all of the features that it has, is still an economy line unit. However, you have to be able to judge those features in a comprehensive way when you're trying to apply it to videography or photography. If you're talking about it from a lens standpoint, this is how it would technically play out. For the price of the Nikon 5200, if I were going to add a nicer lens to it, I'm still going to have more headway with the pin text no matter how we look at this. Okay, so the price difference between, and, and, and now we get into the more practical ends of things here, okay? The price difference between the Nikon and the Pentex, all right? The Nikon, of course, you know, runs 900. The Pentex runs around about 620. Uh, we'll say 650 for the sake of the conversation. But the truth is, to, to fill in that price gap, I can get the Pentex 30... 2.4 millimeter lens, or 35, I'm sorry, not 30, but uh, 35 2.4 millimeter lens, which is automatically going to increase my lighting performance. Okay, uh, or I could get, you know, I could look at the Pentex, you know, 2.8 40 millimeter lens for the price difference that we're talking here. Now, if you were looking at the Nikon, and if you were saying, all right, well, you know what, if I want to shoot in low light, I'm going to get myself like a 50 or, you know, a 35 for around 200 bucks, a um, 1.8 millimeter lens. Well, I can get from Pentex at that price point, because of the price differences in the camera, the Pentex, you know, 50 millimeter, 1.4 millimeter lens, which is still going to give me better mechanics than all of the above. So you, you see how this plays out here. You see how not everything is necessarily written in stone from a ISO perspective. This is a very different setup than when we compared the Canon T4i. And the reason for this is because the Canon T4i and the Pentex are roughly close enough in the same price where you can arguably say, ah, you know, for the features that they have, the Pentex just literally crushes the Canon. I don't think there's any two ways about that. Now, for me, video in. Uh, this is what I would say about the audio. It is true that the Nikon has a, you know, mic input. But the reality is this, is that I, I can go and, you know, purchase a, um, a higher-end zoom mic for the difference in price between the Nikon slash and the, uh, and the Pentex, going in the Pentex's favor. Okay, so I can get myself around like a $200 mic, you know, uh, that, that stand alone and then link the audio and video up. But, um, guys, that's pretty much what I have to say about this. Uh, you guys can look it over, post down your, your thoughts, and I'll get back, to you, get back with you later. All right, bye-bye.